confirmation and reaffirmation of baptismal vows. Let us begin our worship on this third Sunday of Easter in Psalm 180. Psalm 116, by Lexi Christian. 
I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The Lord is dead and tangled me. We rip up the grave to the hold of me. I have names to grief and sorrow. And then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How much shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the service of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. In the, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. A reading from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. We you know that you were ransomed from the evil ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Like that of a lamb, without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love. Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of the Lord of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while would you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions <coughs> gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ.
liturgy of the word in one place and liturgy of the table in another. Right? You, you all know that? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. All right, good. And um, both are important to our worship. And when we listen to this gospel reading, we get the uh, uh, first sense in the gospels of, of how the uh, early Christians actually worshiped. And, uh, you know, today also, we have in this service uh, a baptism, and the Acts of the Apostles also showed in the very beginning of the activity of the church, uh, people were added to the numbers of the church, and that happens again this day. Um, and so we gather in a church fellowship in which there is an expectation of devotion to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers of the people just like the early church. So nothing new here. And when we consider Luke's version of Easter, the resurrection appearances, we have to understand that, uh, first of all, all four Gospels make their own um, landmark opinion based on what the resurrection was like. And Luke is no different, and we find that there are distinct accents in Luke's gospel. Uh, one, it, this story is without parallel to Matthew or Mark or John. Um, second, there's this really powerful focus on the role of Scripture in generating faith that uh, the death and resurrection is continuous with the understanding of the Old Testament, the uh, law and the prophets and the Psalms. And it's through focusing on scripture um, and understanding what happened with Jesus, their eyes were opened, as scripture says. And finally, Christ's self-revelation was found in the breaking of the bread. And although Jesus was a guest in this story, he turns into the host as Jesus is the host of every gathering for Holy Communion or the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper, or whatever you, you call it. And so it reflects the theology and the practice of the Lucan church. Jesus takes bread and blesses and breaks and gives the same action that Jesus did, the feeding of the 5,000. It's the same action that Jesus did at the final Passover supper. And most importantly, Luke, by gathering all of these particular accents, tells the story of Jesus and tells the story of the church. So, I want to just tell you a, a few other things about what it is to be the church that celebrates Easter. Well, I can remember that uh, when I was a seminarian uh, in the last millennium, <laughs> that when I was ready to graduate, I, I thought, you know, okay, I am going to go to the church and really make a difference. I'm going to help. I was cocky. I knew what I could do. I had studied. I had been tested. Uh, I had new lifelong friends. And I thought, you know, the church is going to be happy with me. I'm going to be good. And so then graduation was coming, and I had a new job to go to. And I began to uh, think about it, and I went, you know, maybe I don't know as much as I think I do. I wonder what it's going to be like. What's going to happen? 
And uh, I realized, you know, I thought they taught me everything in seminary, but, you know, they didn't. Uh, they couldn't. And so I began to uh, suffer this question, can I do it? Will I know what to say? Will I make friends? The comfort of seminary was rapidly becoming disorienting. Kind of like a road to Emmaus journey. They were disoriented. And then one night, I had this, uh, this really intense experience. So I have a 42-year-old son. And uh, it's good to remember that at one time, he was a little one. He was, he was six at this time. And uh, one night at dinner, just before graduation from seminary, just before going to this first church, one night at dinner, as we were, you know, breaking bread, he uh, looked at me and asked, Daddy, uh, can God die? And I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> And then he followed up with an immediate question, well, who died, Jesus or God? And I thought, okay, he's six years old. I, I can't talk to him about the Trinity. He's, hasn't, he's not going to understand. Then he goes immediately while I'm suffering in my own head, well, why did Jesus have to die? And I'm thinking, this is a six-year-old. I, I can't talk of atonement or redemption or reconciliation. Finally, it came into my head, well, so God and people can be friends again. And he said, well, I've been friends with God all of my life. And I thought, well, I can't argue with that. And, uh, and then I began to think, who are you? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> and, and then the clincher was this, when he said, I can ask you these things because you're a disciple. And I had to get up from the dining room table and leave the room because I, I had to go process. So I was stunned by the words. In that conversation and meal, I recognized the Lord saying something to me. And immediately, I was reoriented to what I was supposed to be doing and who was the Lord and it wasn't me. My disorientation changed. In the words of Luke, yeah? In the words of Luke, my eyes were open. You know, and now that I, I've thought about it for many years, it's why I go to church. Now, okay, I know that I'm up here doing stuff, but I still go to church, right? And, and I can think of many times when I never knew when my eyes were going to be open by what I heard in a sermon or what I heard in a passage of scripture, or what I felt in the breaking of the bread when I walked up while the choir was singing. I just never knew. Luke is writing the story of Jesus and the story of the church. So, it's good to remember that when we consider the road to Emmaus, everybody understands it's a journey. Well, for this child, it's a new journey. For this child, it's a continuing journey. The journey to Emmaus is concerned with the faithful understanding, having their eyes open, and it's about the formation of disciples because Jesus is always the host. So today, when we gather as St. John's and St. Patrick's, 
we gather to celebrate the liturgy of the word and then the liturgy of the table. And we can all do so simply by praying, open my eyes, Lord. Amen. Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God. 
I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I, I renounce them. them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I, I renounce them. them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. The other candidates will now be presented. I present John Kirk for confirmation. There's two questions you're asking. I present Julie Tran, who desires to reaffirm her baptismal vows. Thank you. Candidates, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do, and with God's grace, I will follow him as my Savior and Lord. So, just so you know, they just answered a summary version of the six questions. <laughs> Alright, so it, it's all connected. Everyone else, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third
church. <laughs> All right. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin to everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, sanctify this water we pray to you by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who hear our plans from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, we all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Douglas, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Let just kind of reach around to here. Okay, here. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant, the forgiveness of sin, and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Just as you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Now pray for these persons who have renewed their communion or commitment to Christ. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself. And that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Servant John, with your heavenly grace, 
that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Feeling in the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants, let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I also with you. Let's give them a Thank you, Julie. Thank you, John. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. 